What's going on, everyone? So I saw this Chris Paul stat. So fun fact, Chris Paul hasn't had a losing season since the 2006-2007 season when the Hornets went 39-43. and The Spurs finished last season 22-60. and This bodes very well, very well for the San Antonio Spurs, right? Talking about, again, team that won 22 games last year um, who have playoff hopes and aspirations this year, right? And Chris Paul talked about it before. Chris Paul, go look at his win shares. Go look at how much he impacts and improves a team every place he's gone. Now, obviously, he's not the, the Chris Paul of old. He's not the Chris Paul in his prime. But he's still a very high IQ, skilled basketball player that is going to go a long way for the Spurs. Look, I've said it time and time again, and I will continue to say it. I think the best decision that the Spurs made this season and could have made this season was to sign Chris Paul. Genuine. I don't think that there was a better move out there outside of like maybe Giannis or Jokic going to the Spurs that has potential to have a lasting impact because of what he's going to be able to do. I mean, again, look at what he's done to to SGA. SGA, like, to this day, talks so highly about Chris Paul and how impactful he was and how he really helped him take strides. He still goes to Chris Paul's house and still works out with him and hangs out with him and picks his brain and calls him when he needs to. Like, you're talking about a guy that has time and time again shown what he can do for guards and point guards. I mean, even like Dennis Schroeder and and him going from like, just like, uh, oh, this guy might be out the league in a few years to like, oh, he's sixth man of the year type guy, right? And I mean, even last year, he played in 58 games. He averaged 26.4 minutes per game. He, uh, He scored nine points, dished out seven assists, Still averaged 1.2 steals, by the way. Um, Had four four rebounds. Shot 82, be nice, say 83% from the foul line. He shot 50% from two-point range. uh, 49.8 if you want to be exact. Uh, EFG of 52.5% and still shot uh, 37.1% with the Golden State Warriors. So again, he's still a guy that go get you you know, eight and eight, which playing alongside Harrison Barnes, Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, right? He's going to, he's going to get his assists and it's not also forget Victor Wimanyama, right? Like Chris Paul is probably going to get five to eight assists a game just because of Victor being on the basketball court. And it's not, and I mean, he'll probably get five a game just from Victor, right? From lobs and just dumping the ball down to him in the right position. And, you know, why, why Victor has established position and whatnot. But also just the attention that Victor draws, right? Which is going to get guys like Harrison Barnes and Devin Vassell and all these guys just wide open looks. And Chris Paul, you know, he's just going to feed that right in the pocket, right on money, right? It, it Victor, more than anybody, I think, will have the biggest impact from Chris Paul. Development-wise, I think the guards will feel that, right? Like, I think uh, Stephon Castle and Trey Jones and Devin Vassell and all these, I think, you know, development-wise, they'll they'll probably gain the most, but I'm talking about like on-court production immediately right out the gate. Victor's going to, I mean, the guy's going to take significant strides. I think Victor will be a 30-point-a-game guy next season, or at least close to it, 27 maybe, something like that. I mean, didn't he average like 28 the last like five games or whatever at the end of the season last year or down the stretch? Might have even been more games than that, but I mean... How many times last year? I mean, every game, like sometimes multiple times a game, there would be Victor Wimanyama 
at times be wide open, like literally wide open. And it was like he wasn't even on the court. Right? His own players are like phasing him out. It's like he's your best player. Chris Paul isn't going to miss those assignments. I can't tell you how many times Victor Wimanyama had clear established position, had a mismatch, whatever, and just didn't get the basketball. Chris Paul isn't going to allow that to happen. Right? Victor is Victor will probably score an extra 10 points a game just by having Chris Paul on the court. Chris Paul will probably get, you know, five easy assists. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Paul leads the league in assists next season. Seriously. Question is, though, can the Spurs actually make the playoffs? Right? Like, I think that they are... I, I think that they're at best a play-in team, if I'm being honest. Unless Victor takes some real strides. Like, if, like, Wimby... I think that there is a genuine argument Victor Wimanyama was a top 15 player last year. I think if he moves into, like, that top 10, top 7, like, clear-cut, like, he is clearly a top 10 player, top 7 player, then maybe. But I think realistically, I think he's... Probably in that, you know, 10 range. Um, You just look, you just go down the list, right? You got like the Thunder, the Nuggets, the Wolves, the Mavericks. Those are probably the top four teams. Clippers, they got worse, but I still think that they're still going to be pretty good. And they did have a solid offseason. I mean, they're not better without Chris Paul, but I think that they had a solid off Or uh, not Chris Paul, uh, Paul George. But... You know, I do think that they they had a solid offseason. Um, Phoenix, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal. I, I, I'm i not, I don't think the Suns are a contender, but I think that they're a playoff team. Pelicans got better. Kings, we'll see. Kings, I'm not really sold on. I think you can make a genuine argument the Kings are worse. Warriors, I think, got better, but how much better is the question? The Pelicans got better, but again, how much better is the question? You know, Brandon Ingram appears to be on his way out. So we'll see there. The Lakers, um, I think health, see what J.J. Redick does. I I know a lot of people think that the Lakers are going to be awful. I think I think don't underestimate the value of just better coaching. <laughs> Seriously. I think coaching can go a really long way. Plus you add another your chemistry and stuff like that. So I just... I think all the teams that were in front of them, oh, Memphis, another team I completely forgot, right? I just, I look at it and I think that there are, you know, I think they'll be in that mix with Warriors, Kings, Pelicans, Lakers, Suns, you know, could maybe one or two of these teams slip and Spurs kind of squeeze in, the, you know, the that 8 to 10 range possibly. But I think ultimately, I think, it depends. One, again, Victor. Wimby has to be, like, great, great. Like, like year seven great rather than year five, right? Or year two. Um, I think Chris Paul is going to go a long way. But I, I don't, I don't, I also don't think the Spurs themselves are even really looking at this as like a playoff year. I mean, I think that they, want to I think that they if they can get into the play and they will I think that they're counting and banking on you know having a, a much better season um I I don't doubt that the Spurs have a winning record right but how much I mean you look at the 10th 9th and 10th seed last year were on 46 games right the Warriors and the Kings won 46 games so the Spurs would have to have a 24 game increase. Is that possible? Sure, right? Chris Paul is probably good for you know, say 5 games, maybe let's just say, let's say 7. Let's be nice say 7 games. I think Harrison Barnes is worth you know, 2 3 put them together, you know, like as if it was like a parlay. Okay, maybe collectively they're worth like 12. Can Wimby get you the other 12? And that's not counting like Devin Vassell. Maybe Devin Vassell takes a stride. Right? Can Vassell move into that like 23 to 25 range? 
right? Chris Paul's going to make things easier for him. Um, what kind of impact does Stephon Castle have right out the gate? Keldon Johnson, can he can he have some real strides, right? Like, you know, I, I think it is possible that they're a playoff team, but I just, I look at this, and I think the Spurs do too. This is a development season, right? This is about developing your guys, building them up, building confidence in in Victor and and you know Devin Vassell and and Keldon Johnson if he doesn't end up getting traded and you know Stefan Castle and all these guys right like I think that's why the late, uh, the Spurs went and got Harrison Barnes and Chris Paul cuz they're looking at it as like okay Barnes can handle the forwards Paul can handle the guards and we can really start to grow and develop and kind of expedite this process. Um, but anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Fast question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you think like, yeah, like Chris Paul going to do wonders. Do you think Spurs are a playoff team? Do you think? No, not quite. Um, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.